विवेक हेलो या विवेक वट आई डू इज आई मेक यू दोस्ट हाँ सिंस वी डोट नीड द लाइव इयर रेकॉर्डिंग विल ऑलवेज बी देर ओके Okay, that should be fine. Yeah, that should be fine. That's yeah. So, which one uh, you want me to make host? Like there are two Vivek here, no? One with the photo or one with just the key? Uh, you can make one without photo. Okay. So I'm making you the host, so you can keep on controlling the meeting. I I will just be there. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, already done. Thank you. Good afternoon, Hanuman sir. Hanuman sir, can you hear me?
Hi, Vivek. Can you hear me? Hanuman, sir, can you hear me? I can hear you. Hello, Vivek. Yeah, Hanuman, sir, can you hear me? Hello. Uh, hello, hello. Hanuman, sir, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, but there's an echo. Yeah, but there's an echo. Yeah, but there's an echo. Uh, uh, there's two devices. Vivek, there. Two Vivek, you are on in two devices. Just mute one of the devices. Can you hear me now? Yep. Well. Okay. Okay. Great. Good. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Roshanji. Good afternoon. Took me a while. Sorry, there was some registration issue that they kept on saying. Oh. -ho. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Ah, you will go ahead. Registered. You know. Okay. Okay. Anyway, I'm logged in, so that's not a problem. Yep. Right, right. You are well before time. Yeah. Thank you. So, Vivek, I think what we should ask is they should copy the link uh, and then paste it on the browser and then go via that. If you just click on join meeting, it asks you to register again. Right, 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 right. So Vivek, is this mostly for Rotarians? No, it's not restricted to Rotarians. We have also a few participants from IIT, from our university, Northeast, that is Northeastern Hill University, then IIT Roorkee, some of them have registered, then uh, several other IITs, uh, several colleges. But actually the timing that we selected this time, that is 3 p.m., so many of them are not available. It also happened that uh, this time, uh, examinations are also on semester exams and semester exams. So we'll have uh, students as well, but Rotarians and professionals will also be there. Our very ideal time is 7.30 in the evening. Okay, that's kind of late for Northeast, huh? That is, that is why, but uh, I think if we want uh, most, because see, uh, Rotarians and all the club members, they are going to take the initiatives and projects. 
Right. So uh, that will bring a, a huge change. Most of the Rotarians are free only after 7, 6.30 or 7, because all of us are professionals in different fields. So uh, maybe the next webinar that we are we have a schedule that is on 30th. Uh, it has already been scheduled. Tomorrow, I guess, the promo should be released. Uh, it is at 7.30 p.m. on uh, sustainable practices and sustain, traditional practices to uh, sustainable development. Let me just check. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just give me a moment. Sarmila, you're there? Yes. Sarmila, can you hear me? Yes, Bhaiya. Am I audible or not? You are not audible, actually. Just give me a moment. We can hear her. I, I could hear her. Okay, but... okay. Just, I think there is... Um, hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, oh. Bhaiya. Great, great. I guess there was some connection issue. Now sorted. Sarmila, I think it's three o'clock. Our other is, uh, one speaker has joined. Uh, we are waiting for uh, Dr. Gayatri. Uh, I can't see her in the list. As of the moment. Yes, Mr. Uh, Roshan Rai has already joined. Good afternoon, Madam Gayatri. I can see her. She has just. Yeah, yes, I have yes, just yes. logged in. Just give me. I don't know. I am. Apologies. I somehow thought this was at five o'clock. And by chance, oh. I got back to your mail. And I just uh, saw that it was at three. You know, you said the time would change and then it is not changing. So I said, uh, fine. So I immediately logged it. Uh, apologies, really. No problem. No problem. That's that's uh, that's okay. 
Uh, I have made you the co-host, uh, Rosan Ji. You are also the co-host, so both of you can share the presentation, you know, on your own. Okay. Uh, uh, just give, give me a moment for me to get myself set while just a minute for my PPT to be. Yeah. All right. All right, ma'am. In the meantime, we can go ahead with uh, the opening address and start the program if that is okay with you. Sure. Please go ahead. Yes. Sure. Thank you. So, Sarmila, over to you. We should start. I think we are four minutes delayed. We should start on time. Yeah. Please go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Take care of the earth and she will take care of you. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is doing pretty well. And on this art day, I wish you all a very happy art day. On this art day this year, the theme is planet versus plastic, which underscores the imperative for collaborative climate change and safeguard biodiversity. And when each can our district remain behind. So yes, our district, that is RI District 3-4-0, in a joint initiative with ESREG, has initiated the art dialogues, which will serve as a catalyst for positive environmental action by fostering awareness, sharing knowledge, inspiring change, fostering collaboration, facilitating networking, and promoting accessibility. Its bi-monthly frequency will ensure a regular cadence of engagement and momentum in addressing press in addressing pressing environmental issues, ultimately contributing to the most sustainable and resilient future for our planet. So yeah, first of all, G, for coming up with this initiative for our Mother Earth. And now I would like to welcome Rutarian Hanuman, Chair, ESRG, South Asia, to give the welcome address. Over to you, Rafael Hanuman, sir. Hello, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are absolutely audible. Thank you, Sharmila, for your uh, nice opening remarks and asking me to go ahead. Thank you for that. And a big thanks to Vivek, uh, who has put together this very relevant and uh, very necessary uh, you know, webinar series, uh, very aptly and rightly termed as the Earth Dialogues. What a irony it is that we must have a dialogue for the Earth. What a state we have come to that if we need dialogues and we need you know, action just to preserve and conserve our own homes, it has come to that state where I don't know. I mean, are we too intelligent for ourselves, for the human race? It appears that we don't deserve to be intelligent. Well, we are in that situation today. And I hope a lot of good comes out of these dialogues. And more importantly, ESRAG stands for Environmental Sustainability Rotary Action Group. So we need action. Webinars are fine. They are the starting point. But we shouldn't leave it with just dialogues and starting points. We should follow up and each of us do something, inspire others in turn to do a lot. As you said in the opening remark, Sharmila, you said the earth, if you protect it, it protects us, which is again a, a very same thing from one of the Vedas, which says that dharmo rakshati rakshitaha. It says, if you protect dharma, dharma will protect you. So it's basically the very same thing which is happening. And the earth belongs not only to humans, the earth belongs to all the millions and millions of life forms which inhabit it. And it is our bounden duty to see that not only for their sake, for our own sakes, that the ecosystem in which all these organisms are, that they flourish and they continue to do well so that very selfishly, we, the human race, can also do equally well. So again, 
I will take one more line from the, the Upanishads, which says that in one of the Shanti Patas, it says, Channo Ashtu Dvipade Sham Chatushpade. It means, let there be peace on all two leg forms and the multi leg ones, which basically means, let everyone, let every living organism on the earth, let them be in peace. So I think this is a very good starting point. We make thank we are congratulations again. Uh, and as you rightly pointed out, this is perhaps the wrong time of the day for people to log in, register and uh, other things. But I think you should also introduce a small twist in the whole thing. You should ask people who participate, what have you done to reduce either your carbon footprint on the earth or to become more sustainable? Or have you become a more, a more of a minimalist person? Are you improving yourself and your environment every day? If so, in what way? A small questionnaire so that even if people have not done it, they might start doing it just to put something on the board. And the Earth Dialogues can perhaps also institute an Earth Dialogue champion or something like that at the end of the year, just so that you know it can add a little more punch to the whole thing. But this is a great beginning and I wish this whole uh, series, webinar series, a great, great, uh, you know, term and run. And I hope it brings in a lot of positivity and does a lot of good to Mother Earth. Thank you, Vivek. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for enlightening us with such precious words. Uh, without much delay, we will move ahead with the first speaker, if she is ready. Uh, Dr. Gayatri Ragwa, move ahead with your. Madam is there. Yes, I am very much there. I just thought maybe, you know, switching on the video was, uh, you know, disturbing the audio sound. So I'm just going to uh, share my screen. Yeah. S Sharmila, uh, when, uh, as Madam shares, uh, kindly introduce yeah. Madam. Yeah. Yes. Is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. So, madam doesn't need an introduction, but still we should know and get inspired but by the as, uh, achievements or the works madam has been doing throughout her lifetime. So, yes. Madam Gayatri is a gold medalist at the postgraduate degree course in geography. Madam Gayatri took her MPhil degree from the degree school of Economics, Delhi University, with specialization on the human impact on the environment. Since then, she has been ardently committed to spreading education and awareness about the environment. She taught for several years at university and high school before devoting 15 years at the Environment Agency Abu Dhabi to raise the profile of environment education in I think we lost uh, Sharmila. Yeah. Uh, the network, actually, it's so windy in Northeast these days. So that's why the network disturbance is there, even in the LAN connection. I'm, I'm uh, very sorry for that. Uh, so allow me to continue from here. Madam Raghava uh, has done immense work in the field of uh, environment and uh, she's a well-known uh, activist in the field of environment, particularly her contribution when it comes to uh, engaging youth in tackling the plastic pollution uh, throughout the country through UNEP has been has really attracted a lot of uh, people around. So, Madam, I welcome you to once again on behalf of uh, uh, the organizing committee, the Earth Dialogues. The floor is yours. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you all hear me then? Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. Yes, there may yes. be some sound coming from my, since I'm working from home, you may hear some thud coming in because some construction is going on as always. I think India, all the buildings are always under construction, no matter how old they are. Like they may be 20 years old, but they still will be constructed. Anyway, coming to my topic, which is, uh, I mean, you've all like, I've been just because the whole thing got um, disrupted. I've been in the field of environment education. So as Vivek said, my 
passion is education and my passion is with youth. So I've been uh, an environment educator for over four decades now. I think it's almost 44 years now. And uh, on behalf of UNEP, we run initiatives on plastic. And I, as today's theme, the Earth Day theme also synchronizes well with plastic and the issue of plastic waste. So I wanted to talk to you about how we are engaging youth to beat the plastic pollution. But before I go ahead, a few plastic facts that I would like to share for uh, for everybody. The uh, Is my screen properly visible? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, so plastics today are everywhere. They are a part of our life and they are everywhere, right? You talk about packaging, supply chains, transport, household products, clothes, food, health, defense, electrical, electronic equipment, energy generation, construction, name it, you will find the usage of plastic everywhere. In fact, I have just come back from one Earth Day celebration that has been done by youth here, and they were focusing on e-waste, and they were talking about how 20% of the e-waste is plastic waste, and they were focusing on that. So you go wherever you will find plastics. They are a very, very integral part of our lives. Now, I always see that whenever I think of plastic, I think of that good, bad, and the ugly music that used to be there. I don't know if many of you may be very young, but at my age, we used to have that music, good, bad, and the ugly. So plastic has its good, its bad, and the ugly side of it. But before that, Plastic is, why do we have the good, bad, and the ugly? It's because we have variety of plastics. We have various kinds of plastic, different types of plastic, and some plastics are used for some purposes. Some plastics are used for some other purposes. So there are variety of plastic. I'm not going to read it out to you, but the screen, I think, is visible to all of you. So we know that there are a variety of plastics. The point why I'm showing you the variety of plastic is I'm going to shortly come to plastics that can be recycled, plastics that cannot be recycled. That is why it is important to know the different varieties of plastic. Now, as I said, it's the good, bad, and the ugly. So plastics are not so fantastic. I mean, because it came out, plastics came because they were so easy. They were very easily, you get, they're very flexible, they are cheap. You can mold it into different shape. You can use it in different places. And then this was thought of as a wonder uh, material. So this wonder material thought, oh, wow, it's fantastic. It's something that can be of use to everybody. But actually, plastic is not so fantastic, especially when you find plastic in the stomach of turtles. When you find elephants, camels, and many land animals eating plastic, when you see beautiful, pristine mountains and our Himalayas littered with plastic, our rivers getting littered with plastics. When you see our coastline, the Mumbai, the coast, when you see the sea coast littered with plastic, plastics even contribute to the production of plastic, contributes to approximately 3.4% of the global greenhouse gas emission. And of course, I need not mention plastic is an eyesore. You go towards the main road where you have agricultural, you know, the highways where you see the agricultural feeds on the side, almost like a flower, you'll find those thin plastic bags hanging onto trees and growing like flowers practically everywhere, although they're not as beautiful as flowers. So they are an eyesore. So there is the good side and the bad side and the ugly side. The good side being without plastic, now plastic is used for storing water, you know, our tanks, the water tanks. Plastic is used in the, you know, in the medical, uh, for medical, the syringes and many things. Plastics are also very important and they have their good uses still such a time that we don't find alternatives to them. We have to go along with such of those plastics because they do render a lot of service. Because if we keep saying plastic is bad, plastic is bad, we tend to look at it in black and white and when we say, oh, the government has taken a ban, and then we go out and say, no, I find plastics everywhere. We have to be clear. We have to understand what are the different kinds of plastic, what can be recycled, what cannot be recycled, what is necessary. In fact, I often say plastic is a very, very wicked issue. The plastic pollution is a wicked issue. 
wicked issue is something that defies even definition because where do we start and where do we end we can't even say that it is all bad so some of the global global plastic facts 430 million tons of plastic we produce every year Two, that is about to 2000 garbage truck loads of plastics are dumped into the ocean every year plastics account for 85 percent of the marine litter 36% of the plastic production we use is for packaging. 46% of the plastic goes into the landfill. 22% of the plastic lands up as litter on all our roads and everywhere. 17% of the plastic is incinerated. It is burnt, giving out harmful gases. 15% of the plastic waste is collected for recycling. But remember, only 9% of the plastic actually gets recycled. Research shows that by 2050, plastics will likely outweigh all the fish, the weight of all fish in the sea. And that's not a great prospect for us to face. In the last 10 years alone, we've produced more plastics than we produced it in the previous century. Plastic generally takes very long to degenerate, and that's like 500 to 1,000 years. And that is why it is such a problem. Even when it does decompose, it becomes microplastics. It doesn't degrade fully and it brings with it its own problems. Currently, there are about 50 to 75 trillion pieces of plastics and microplastics in the ocean. The plastics either break down into microplastic or it will float around and end up forming large garbage patch in the ocean. So what has been done to face this issue? Globally, we are now arriving at a multilateral action on plastic. Uh, you know, we have a United Nations General Assembly that happens every time. And in the new year, in the 5.2 UNIA, which is United Nations Environment Assembly, which, which was held a couple of years back, which is on 2022, a resolution was agreed that we all need to come together as different countries and arrive at an internationally legal binding instrument, something like we have uh, how we have the climate treaty, we have different treaties where all the countries come together and agree to act on it because plastics also is an international issue. It's not only a national issue. Plastic flows everywhere. The microplastics travel through the oceans every time. So it is, we needed an international instrument. So on 2nd of March, the United Nations Environment Assembly adopted a resolution to negotiate a binding treaty to address the full life cycle of plastic from production to its disposal. Now, by now, three international negotiation meetings have been held to arrive at what each country, what should we agree to, what can we realistically achieve. The fourth INC meeting is to kick off tomorrow. And that's just between tomorrow and 28. The last INC meeting, the international negotiation meeting, will take place in November of this year, after which all countries will arrive at a plastic treaty, which will kick in in 2025. By that treaty, all countries will be bound to reduce their plastic production and plastic management. Now, in India, what is the scenario like? In India, although we are not a large producer of plastic. We still produce, you know, we, we, we consume about 16.5 million tons of plastics annually, according to Piki. India is the 12th largest contributor to marine litter. 59% of the total plastic we consume in India is packaging, packaging material applications. The country generates 4.12 million tons per annum out of which 40% is uncollected. It's not collected. It's not taken for anything. It's just dumped. It is estimated that River Ganges carries sixth highest number of plastic debris to the oceans. Ganges, 55% of the fishermen or fisher folk report sighting of animals other than fish entangled in fishing gear. You know, we have this tendency of discarding fishing gear and we find many marine organisms and aquatic organisms entangled in them. We there is a very high risk to around 3,500 Ganges River dolphin due to the plastic pollution. Good news: 
60% of our plastic is gets recycled. We have an amazing facility. It's informal, but it works. The bad news, even then, 9,400 tons end up in the seas, ocean, or gets piled up due to, because we don't have sound segregation system. This is the scenario in India. In India, the government has come up with a multi-pronged approach. So what do they do? We've got a SUP van, all single-use plastic. Single-use plastic is the baddie. Because once you use it, then you tend to discard it. And it is so thin that it is very difficult to recycle it as well. So there is a ban on single-use plastic. There are uh, items which are specified, which are totally banned, especially cutlery. And many items, 19 items are there, which are banned from, uh, uh, which are made out of single-use plastic. We also have kicked in a EPR, which is extended producer responsibility, which means that the companies and the manufacturing units which produce or which package use a large amount of plastic are responsible for taking care of their share of pollution. So that is the EPR that's kicked in and it is being set in place. We also have a program which has been announced by our prime minister, which is life, lifestyle for environment, which looks at behavioral ways to reduce the use of plastic. At the end of the day, it is always behavior. If the behavior changes, if we change, then definitely many things will change. So what? where does the youth come in? We run an initiative called the Tight Turner Plastic Challenge uh, in India. Till now, there is about 760,000 plus plus youth all across India who have joined us from practically all states. We have many, many supporters who support us and who bring their youth to participate with us. So this particular challenge is designed to reflect, to discover, and to lead change for youth. So we've got three levels of challenge. The name is the challenge. So there are three levels of change. So any participating individual youth or group of youth have to go through three levels. In each level, there are tasks set. And each level has an objective. The first level, totally comprehend and understand the issue of plastic. The second level is reach out to the community and be an agent of change in your society, advocate of advocate for change in your society. And the third level is make a concrete change on ground. So such of those youth who make a concrete change then get the badge and are called as tight turner champions. And anyone can join this particular initiative. It is open for a lot of people. So you can be a youth in a college. You can be a youth in a school. You just have to be between 12 years of age to 35 years. You laugh. We, yes, we were, before we had 26 years of age, but many, many young uh, workers wanted to be a part of this. So we've increased the age to 35. You can be in a school, you can be in a college, you can be in a rural area. You need not be studying at all. You can be from, like we also uh, target mentally and physically challenged students. We also target marginalized society, Adivasis, women. We target practically a variety of people making this perhaps to be the most inclusive initiative. Everyone comes together to fight this menace of plastic here in this particular challenge. So what do we have? We have a toolkit which we share with almost every participant who registers with us. They In that toolkit, step-by-step -step information is given as to how you can do, what do you do in level one, level two, level three? What are the tasks that you can undertake? You undertake those tasks, you report back, and then you make a change on ground. Anyone can join this. So many, many change makers. You may see, I mean, okay, why is she talking about her initiative? The reason why I'm talking is, as I said, I've been an environment educator for 44 years now. I have seen a variety of initiatives and I have myself engaged dealing, designing variety of initiatives. But I must say, this is one initiative that has made a lot of change. So please, I would encourage you to go to our website read the stories of our champions, individual students who've done so well, now they've become global personals. They are really global ambassadors for fighting plastic pollution. So we have Adya Chopra who makes eco breaks. We have Mansi Thakur who, may, who, who brought back turtles and migratory birds to the coast of Gujarat, Mahua in Gujarat. We've got Syed who invented edible waffle cups for beverages. We've got Sneha Shahi, also fondly known as the crocodile girl, because when she cleaned up the stream behind, 
beside her uh, college, she brought the crocodiles and the flapjack turtle back. Today, she's doing her PhD in conservation. And we got an Abhishek Mani, who is a scout who's done wonderfully and now works with UNICEF. We've got Rushali, who works with Menstrual Cup because they use plastic. We've got a Rituraj. We've got Pulak. We've got so many stories and stories and inspiring youth. I'm really telling you, the beauty of this initiative, it's so flexible. And there are so many ground level solutions that have come up that it really warms my heart to see what our youth is capable of. You just need to give them that platform. They will do the rest. So I think with that, I'm going to say thank you. I think I've taken up a lot of time. I see Mr. Vivek Kumar has enabled his camera. Thank you, Mr. Vivek Kumar. And thank you, uh, uh, Rotary Club. And I hope, really sincerely hope Rotary Club joins us and supports us in this initiative. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Gayatri Raghwa, ma'am, for your wonderful inputs. I wish to hear you more in the future. Mr. Roshan Rai, the Secretary, IMI, India. So, sir. Good evening, everyone. Sorry, I'm just trying to navigate my Zoom right now. Can you see my screen? Yes, uh, yes we, can, we cool. can see it now, yes. Sure, sure, sure. Thanks. Because there was a bit of a... Uh, good evening, everyone in Rotary. And thanks for inviting us to share some of our thoughts on... Earth Day, and uh, I am not going to kind of uh, talk about, uh, uh, I just realized I'm not going to offer solutions too much, but it comes perfect because ma'am has come from a very strong solution individual perspective. So I think I'll try and negotiate what uh, we want to say uh, based upon the thematic that is there of of planet versus plastic. So it's come to that point that we are saying, you know, if the plastic continues, the planet might not make it. I'd also want to kind of really highlight uh, the Earth Day demand for this year, which talks about phasing out all single-use plastics urgently, and then really, really pushes for a strong UN treaty on plastic pollution, which Ma'am was referring to. And it's about to start in Ottawa, because there is a huge problem with the negotiation that is going on because uh, uh, the product, uh, the producers and the plastic lobby is really pushing uh, the negotiation and not really uh, coming out with a supportive solution that really ends plastic pollution. And uh, this year's charter also demands an end to fast fashion because fast fashion is one of the biggest polluters uh, of of the planet now with such a lot of fashion being based upon uh, on oil. If you look at the demand is also 60% reduction in production of all plastics by 2040. And so in that sense, it's a huge recognition that it is a, a production issue and we need to end production, you know, and, uh, and then it finally has this big vision, which is a global vision of a plastic free future. And so for me, why is there such an important call to action and a, such a strong language on today's Earth Day uh, in in this 2024, you know? And this is something that we hadn't heard so much in the past, you know? And uh, and, and I think that's what my uh, presentation is going to dwell upon. Uh, so we definitely are uh, calling our era to be Anthropocene, but I think more and more we are also calling it a Plasticine era. And the Plasticine era, which is definitely an Anthropocene event, 
it's a production issue. And today, if we really want to address the issue, which is uh, plastic pollution, we have to acknowledge that it's a system in crisis. And we have to look at the complete life cycle of plastic before we can actually redress this global calamity that actually threatens life on Earth. We cannot anymore look at plastic pollution as an end of the pipeline downstream waste management issue that is relegated to a dustbin or such a Bharat Abhyan worker or a Nirmal uh, such a Bharat uh, Abhyan uh, person who comes and collects your waste on a day-to-day -day basis or once in a week. There is a huge, huge need for producers to take responsibility of their waste. And it is no longer just a citizen's action. It cannot just be a citizen action. It definitely resides on citizen action, but ultimately it is a production issue. And people who produce plastic must take responsibility as such. I think one of the biggest narrative change that needs to come about is that we cannot recycle ourselves out of this mess. Because if you remember Ma'am's presentation also, she highlighted that only 9% of plastic ever produced since the time that plastics was created by humanity has been recycled. So it's not just that in the last 10 years or so, of all plastic made in 2017, this report came out, which says only 9% plastic has been recycled. And this particular piece of information is such a powerful narrative change because forever we've been told we can recycle ourselves out of this mess. And if that is what the data says, that only 9% plastic has been recycled, and we have to renegotiate of how we look at collecting and hopefully transferring it to a recycling unit. And in India, we actually do a terrible uh, state in terms of recycling. But globally, we know now that actually even in, in countries that thought was doing great recycling was only uh, uh, immersed in waste trade while sending their plastic waste to, to developing countries like, uh, like us in India. But at the same time, I think we have to disaggregate the data a bit more to really look at uh, this material that we have uh, started, uh, depended on so much and also been pushed upon is that like there is such a single use epidemic. And in today's context, we know we just have one planet and we have finite resources. So a production system which is designed to be used for a very short duration and thrown just does not work. We cannot afford to have a production system which is based upon use and throw, a single use. And so if you look at the data that in the last 10, 15 years, most of the plastic that we produced has come in this time. And in the last 10 years, we know for sure 40% of all plastic produced is uh, single use, you know, and that is something we just can't afford to have it anymore. What is very important that the root of it all, it's not just a waste issue, it is life issue. It is related to the climate crisis also. And if you look at the UNDP report, it says the plastic industry is the fastest growing source of industrial greenhouse. What is very clear, which uh, the report just came out this month, uh, just before the INC4 in, in Ottawa, is that it is very clear that plastic extraction, plastics impact on the climate starts from its extraction because it's ultimately coming from mostly from oil. And in the way we are consuming plastic, all our efforts to negotiate a 1.5 degree below change in rise in temperature in the various climate change discussions will not have any impact if we do not make rapid cuts on plastic production. So in that sense, we have to be very clear and us living in India is very important because we are the top five countries uh, of plastic production. So I just want to kind of go back to where I come from. I live in uh, a town in the mountains in the Himalaya called Darjeeling. And I would look at the case study based upon my context also, because I think uh, there is various contextual issues while this uh, crisis is global also. So if you look at this image uh, in 2018, this is a landfill that was designed to last for 20 years. Within a couple of years, you cannot even see the wall. 
Where I live, we throw our plastic waste downstream and we are constantly cribbing as to how waste management systems are not great, but I'll come into this argument a bit later. And so plastic also contributes to global. Besides the extraction of it, then later on it burns and contributes to greenhouse uh, gases and climate change as such. So we are part of this movement called the Himalayan Cleanup since 2018, where India was uh, the global host for World Environment Day, and the theme was beat plastic pollution. It wasn't. It was uh, really in sync with how we believe in, and we've been continuing this particular movement every year since 2018, including the lockdown eras. And I'd like to share some of the key findings that the waste and brand audit shows, which corroborates more and more with this notion that we cannot recycle ourselves out of this mess and producers must take responsibility. So the recent 2023 data uh, shows that 92%, uh, this is uh, data coming out of 63 sites across the Indian Himalayan region, is that 92.9% of all plastic, of all waste cleared was plastic. And of that, 77.4% was non-recyclable plastic. So we know recycling is a myth and it doesn't work. And you might have uh, like, you know, data that shows India is doing great, but on ground reality, it's not true as such. But also we know now that these are the top Companies that pollute the mountains, they make tremendous profits if you look at how uh, profitable these com companies are. And they take great efforts to reach the, their products up to the mountains, but have no, no notion of, 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 of responsibility when it comes to taking it back or actually even more redesigning such a problematic uh, plastic pollution, because if you look at the 77.4 non-recycled plastic, it is multi-layered plastic that cannot be recycled. And so multi-layered plastic becomes one of the biggest challenges for waste managers. And if you look at today, why we have such a lot of plastic waste all over the uh, Himalaya is because most of them are multi-layered plastic that has no use and are dumped immediately after use. And if you re recognize these companies which are global in nature, but also local, PepsiCo, Coke, Nestle, Chaudhary Group, Parley, ITC, Amul, Unilever, Dabur, have a huge, huge waste footprint in the Himalaya, in India, and at the global level, because our waste and brand audit are part of the global brand audit, and pretty much these same companies keep, keep popping up at the international level also. So it's high time that these companies no longer just do corporate social responsibility, but really do extended producer responsibility to manage their waste. A couple of insights that we have coming out of the Himalayan cleanup is that uh, India has done great with the single-use plastic ban uh, in 2022, but there are limitations of the single-use plastic ban. For example, it does not clearly say, can you uh, stop using plastic bags? It gives a micron and a GSM standard, which makes no sense as such. But what is also important to note is that this 19 uh, items that were banned in India actually just make maximum 4% of the total plastic waste in India. And therefore, we need to now expand the notion of what single-use plastic is within the plastic waste management rules. What is really, really crucial and affects every one of us immediately is if you look at some of the waste that is there, maybe you will see some of your most uh, tasty, likable uh, uh, snacks or uh, what uh, you really like when you are feeling really warm and thirsty is that there is a huge, huge, huge food and waste intersect. And this really questions as to what are we eating and what is it we are doing to ourselves and our planetary health? Because these are multi-layered plastic, which gets junked immediately. 81% of all the Himalayan cleanup 2023 was food packaging. And of them, 73% was non-recyclable. Today, ma'am was already talking about how there is a proliferation of microplastic. We also knows, know that tox, uh, plastic has huge toxicity. And when it comes to close contact with food, the toxicity leaches. So what are we eating? And then what are we doing as soon as we eat? So our own lifestyle and how are we made and forced to eat such things? And then 
the question is why are such products being sold because uh, we almost seem to have these products being constantly marketed to even children who, who we know that uh, have uh, have uh, evolving sense of what is right and wrong if we can have uh, regulations for alcohol and cigarette we have to have regulations for junk uh, today i use this word uh, hyper processed hyper taste enhanced ex extremely high in sugar salt and fat uh, industrially processed edible substances so today i'd like to close up with a couple of thoughts in terms of solutions we need to have systemic changes and we need to have solutions beyond the dustbin we need to close the plastic tap as such we have to really really strengthen the single use plastic ban in india and expand the notion of what single-use plastic is. For example, we don't need a bottled water, a plastic bottled water to run our meetings or events. You know, uh, what is what we know that uh, is that it's filtered and boiled water is the safest, especially with the amount of microplastic that is there. Uh, we have to include uh, all forms of plastic, which includes multi-layered plastic in this ban. We can no longer continue to have a business as usual um, a narrative of how we look at plastic from, uh, from end of the pipeline thing. But I think sometimes most of our interventions tend to look at black, trying to solve with a singular technological solution. Uh, as well as a, a la large landscape oriented perspective. I think recognizing small initiatives that are decentralized, empowering and pe with people's participation is an important aspect where it builds upon individual action and has uh, pr uh, institution processes to manage the waste. And the more we decentralize, uh, decentralize our waste, the better it is for us to really, really address the issue. I think importantly, uh, individual as well as community awareness is important because not many people are aware of the complexity of the challenges of waste management. And we are sold this dream that if I put it into a dustbin, it will get recycled. Dustbin is not a magical solution. Recycling is not sufficient because we know only 9% of waste plastic waste has been recycled till date. We have to be really, really aware of the false solutions that are constantly bombarded on us. Uh, for example, they say enzymes are coming or waste to energy. It's not waste to energy, it's burning uh, or rolling plastic on the roads or even uh, this so-called biodegradable com compostable plastics, which, which we just don't have standards. And if you look at recent promulgations, they are equally terrible and still single use. So I think uh, we have to look at it from a larger uh, lifestyle perspective as such. Importantly, if we know a majority of our waste comes from packaging, packaged food, we have to reclaim our local food spaces. We have to push back on the junk as such. We are blessed in India that we still have a large uh, direct access to uh, food producers, the farmers, and we need to recognize and actually interact and buy from them. We have to start policies that restrict people like Amitabh Bachchan, Virat Kohli and uh, uh, Akshay Kumar selling terrible food on our TV to young kids. We have to restrict that such thing. We actually have to demand front of label food packaging indicating, indicating sugar, salt, trans fat contents uh, in the same manner that uh, that cigarettes are sold, and and this is some, not something we are uh, talking about. It's already there in the Indian uh, rules and FSCI. It's just that as citizens we need to demand. And I think for Rotarians and all the people who are involved in education and and government institutions, if all our food was based on local food. We'd be eating fresh, we'd be eating on, on package, and also we would be supporting local economies and we would actually be living this buzzword, which is so greenwashed today of circular local economies. I cannot stop or reiterate that global, a larger producer responsibility has to happen at a global level. We already know Nestle, uh, in the past few days uh, said that there is higher sugar in, in baby food in India, but not in Europe. So such companies must, must be taken accountable of. But at the same time, national and local companies also have to take responsibility of our waste. 
that starts from this understanding that waste, plastic waste is a design flow and materials that have no solutions like multi-layered plastic should not be in the market. It is not a management issue. It is a product, uh, production issue. And so today we have to be very, very careful about how the global plastic treaty is going on because we know that uh, the, the plastic and oil lobby outnumbers uh, people's voices in the plastic law in in the negotiation and uh, globally looks like we are not really heading for uh, uh, the type of treaty that is needed for us in the mountains we know epr is there but we have yet to see it manifest in any part of the himalaya because uh, it is easier for these companies to do a tiny bit in the big cities they do not take responsibility for our mountains they will use our image to sell the products but will not take into account that uh, the sacredness, the uh, ecological importance and, and, and the high value of aesthetics that brings uh, is not actually responded to by these companies. So extended producer responsibility needs to recognize ecological diverse importance and fragility at the same time. So the alternatives have to actually look at the larger life cycle plastic. We cannot have alternatives coming that are single use and then I think ultimately at a global level, sharing of information and techn technological cooperation is important because we know more and more waste to energy plants that are being uh, scrapped in, in, in the West are being sent to Southeast Asia, including India. So, so we still, with today's uh, thing, we dream of, of a zero waste Himalaya and we know we can achieve if all of us are united. We also recognize uh, that India needs to be made proud of our mountains that's why we are under the integrate mountain initiative as such so thank you that's my you know, long and short of it i look forward to the rest of the day thank you thank you thank you so much uh mr roshan dry moving Sir Miller, can't hear you. Vivek, I think we lost Sharmila. Uh, yes, sir. I think she's not all. Right, right, right. I, today is so much of disturbances going on this side. Anyway, so uh, once again, I would like to thank Mr. Rawson Dry for this very, very informative presentation. And uh, this is this is really uh, very informative. Why? Because we are in the Himalayan setup. We are in the hilly regions, mountainous regions, and how this plastic. Uh, pollution, particularly the single-use items, are uh, disturbing our mountainous region. That he has given a complete understanding of about. So uh, thank you so much once again. And I would request each and everyone to kindly be with us. Uh, why? Because after the presentations, we will have the question and answer session. So please be ready with your questions. I think I am the last presented for today. So without wasting any time, let me uh, share my screen so that we can straight away go ahead with the presentation. Yeah. Guys, uh, is my presentation visible to you? Yes, oh, yes sir. Yeah. Yes. Great. So uh, thank you so much once again and uh, for this wonderful opportunity at the Earth Dialogues on the Earth Day today, I would like to share with you all my talk on charting the path, exploring eco-friendly alternatives for single-use plastic in a post-ban era. My dear friends, why I have particularly selected this topic is because when people are already used to, we have already seen that how people have got used to something called plastics and particularly got attached to the single-use plastics in their day-to-day -day life that they cannot think of even when we go outside even to drink uh, and we need water. Then what we do, the first thing that we do is go and grab a water bottle from outside. 
So that is how much I'm uh, trying to inform you all that we are linked to the plastic. And that is why once we talk about the ban, then there has to be an uh, alternative. An alternative that is affordable by all. We have to look into this alternative. And today, in the today's presentation, we will try to look into how this alternative, uh, what are the alternatives and how these alternatives are replacing single-use plastics if they are replacing and uh, what are again if they have any environmental impacts. I think I'll not dwell more upon uh, the environmental and health impacts of single-use plastics. It has already been covered very nicely by all the by our two uh, speakers today, and we have already seen that how plastic has created so much of uh, damage to environment and also human health. I am also sharing a few of the studies. There are multiple studies which has now uh, which uh, have been conducted linking the micro plastics to serious health problems. My dear friends, I would like to inform you that microplastics are today now flowing in our blood vessels. They have been found in our blood vessels to that extent I'm talking about. Then there are also different other health impacts. Bioaccumulation of such microplastic is there inside our body. They are also associated to various diseases, also some fatal diseases like cancer and others. In fact, uh, two years back, a group of uh, researchers from Europe also reported microplastics and the presence of plastics in the human fetus. So that much is the problem that we are going to talk about and much more and more of research is happening in this field as we move ahead. This is a simple map that I wanted to show you all, a world map with the uh, regions with the countries where plastics are particularly single-use plastics here I'm talking about totally or partially banned or uh, banned in some of the territories as you can see in our country particularly the manufacturing and import of single-use plastics are banned particularly for 19 uh, articles which also includes uh, plastic carry bags and uh, on the right hand side, you can see the notification of ban on single use plastic that was uh, notified by Ministry, MOEFCC, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change on uh, in the year of uh, 2022. Well, talking about the eco-friendly alternatives, what we can think of the eco-friendly alternatives? What are the eco-friendly alternatives that can replace single-use plastics? And uh, the best alternative that we all can think of when we talk about uh, uh, plastic carry bag is I always suggest to everyone and I practice myself this thing very, very seriously is bring your own bags. That is very, very important when we talk about uh, eco-friendly alternatives. Carry your own bottle. That is very much important when we talk about eco-friendly alternatives. Then another uh, image that you can see is glass and metal based alternatives. For example, in case uh, if we are using a plastic jar or container, can we think of uh, returning back to the glass jars? Can we think of returning back to such kind of containers? When we are talking about plastic water bottles, can we think of uh, taking the stillness a steel water bottle kind of like which we can use on a very regular basis, which is also healthy to carry? So can we think of that? Then also comes compostable or biodegradable uh, alternatives and solution to single-use plastics. Recently, it has uh, picked momentum, but not that much momentum that it should pick. The reason it has not picked that much momentum, which uh, uh, Rawson sir has also talked about, is uh, uh, there is a still, I would say, a gap of understanding when we talk about uh, a gap in understanding when we talk about compostable and biodegradable plastics. So this can be one of the most, uh, one of the best and uh, eco-friendly alternative to the single-use plastics. And uh, in my presentation, 
we can see how now there is a need of understanding a uh, little bit time i'll take of yours on making you understand how these two terms have different definition when we talk about biodegradable material when we talk about compostable material so when we talk about biodegradable materials such plastic materials or such polymers can be broken down by the action of living microorganism usually microbes yeah by the into water carbon dioxide and biomass under natural condition but when i say under natural condition yes but the rate of biodegradation depend on various factors the various factors <laughs> here could be uh, temperature the various factors here could be uh, the availability of oxygen the various factor here could be the presence of microorganism and uh, so on so these are the uh, biodegradable plastics or polymers but when we talk about compostable plastics they are a subset of uh, biodegradable plastics that are in uh, intended to break down uh, Hanuman ji, can you see my presentation? I'm sorry. Uh, no, suddenly it just went off. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Actually, as I said today, the connection is kind of like very, very unstable. Yeah. Just uh, after the aerobic, anaerobic thing, the next slide did not come. Uh, uh, Danida, if you can hear me, can you kindly uh, again uh, give me the host right? Why? Because uh, I think I... Just, just a moment. Sorry for the inconvenience. Yeah, but I can go ahead in the meantime. Uh, compostable plastics are subset of biodegradable plastics that are intended to uh, break down in carbon dioxide and water and uh, in a composting kind of, you know, setting we are talking about here. Time period matters a lot. So uh, these uh, compostable plastics degrade in a specific time period uh, into uh, carbon dioxide, water, and inorganic compound in a compostable setting. Just a moment. Let me check if it has come. No, not yet, not yet. Mm -hmm. So in the next slide, I wanted to show you all regarding the biodegradability of bio-based and fossil-based polymers. Now, I would also like to inform you all that whenever we talk about biodegradable or compostable polymers, they are sourced from two sources. One is the bio, uh, organic sources that we can organic or let's say that green sources. We can talk about like corn starch from sugarcane, from cassava. And another source is also fossil-based sources. Even from fossil-based sources, we can get some of the biodegradable uh, polymers. I think I have not got the right seat. Just a moment, just a moment, my friends. I'm sorry for the inconvenience uh, caused. Yeah, uh, but I think it 
it's still taking so much of time i think maybe uh, we will continue once again later um, then uh, some of the bioplastics that we talk about uh, is industrially compostable home compostable soil biodegradable and water degradable i would like to inform you all that whenever we talk about uh, uh, bioplastics then all the polymers are not same at all different polymers are there like polylactic acid is there or uh, polyhydroalkanoids is there that we call PHAs and PHBs. So all these uh, polymers that we have, they are meant to uh, degrade in a particular set of environment. For example, when we talk about industrially compostable polymers, then industrially compostable polymers are PLA, PHAs, PHBs, PBET, thermoplastic starch and uh, others. But when, when I talk about home compostable, then what is the difference between industrially compostable and home compostable? Industrially compostable, there is need of a slight elevated temperature up to let's say like 65 to 70 degrees Celsius. But when we talk about if a polymer is, when I say that, if, when we say that if a polymer is home compostable polymer, that means that very particular polymer will, all, will also get uh, disintegrated even at temperatures home, uh, I mean, ambient temperatures of 27 to 28 degrees Celsius. Now there are a set of, uh, uh, let's say that uh, standards that is used to uh, make sure that whether that is used to test also and verify that whether these uh, bioplastics are industrially compostable or home compostable. For example, for industrially compostable, we use ISO 17088 standards. Uh, it says that uh, the plastic, the polymer, bioplastic polymer should 90% of it should get uh, disintegrated or degraded uh, within a maximum span of 180 days, leaving no toxic residue behind. Toxic residue also includes the heavy metal and all other compounds, right? So, but when we say that uh, home compostable most of the uh, materials that you see in the market at the name of compostable product is pla based that is the problem which mr roshan rai was talking about that when even when we uh, keep it in a composting environment it is not getting disintegrated it will behave it will take a lot of time and it will behave as much as like you know you'll feel that it is uh, something like a plastic only but actually that is not meant to be composted at home it is meant to be composted industrially so uh, this is this is uh, this has to be really taken care of. and when we talk about soil biodegradable there are another class of plastics uh, bioplastics which we have classified under soil biodegradable such soil biodegradable uh, Plastics are again PHAs, thermoplastic starch, regenerated cellulose. So when we use these compounds, these are soil, uh, by bi soil biodegradable compounds. So uh, we have to really be very sure that what kind of compound we are using and what kind of material we are using, even when it is going to provide a solution. Then again, uh, PLA and other a few other materials, few other polymers will not disintegrate if we dispose them in water. That has to be really understood. So if some of these polymers are uh, disposed in uh, water, they will not disintegrate. There are other uh, biodegradable polymers which actually breaks down in water. In water, again, I'm talking about uh, fresh water and marine water. For example, in fresh water, if you have a PHA-based uh, bioplastic, then it would certainly disintegrate in the uh, fresh water systems. Uh, cellulose acetate would disintegrate in the fresh water systems. But if we talk about, uh, yeah, if we talk about uh, marine water systems, then we have again PHA and thermoplastic starch. These two polymers, if we have any material of these two polymers and they are again, you know, disposed in the marine waters, they will disintegrate. If again we would we throw PLA into marine waters, it will not disintegrate. It will remain there uh, for even five years or six years. Only it will break down into a smaller pieces. That we have to really keep into mind. One another product is also uh, kind of like taking the tour into the market that we that is popularly known by the name of oxo biodegradable.
biodegradable. You might have come across this term. Now, when we call oxo biodegradable, this kind of polymers need presence of oxygen. Means this kind of polymers uh, follow the aerobic disintegration pathway. So we have to really keep into mind that what kind of material we are using. There is a still, I feel a lot of, uh, you know, uh, gap, knowledge gap between even the manufacturers and the users, the end users of what kind of plastics we are using. That's why we have written to MOEFCC that there should be a kind of particular certification logo for each kind of classes. If the plastic is industrially compostable, there should be an identification logo for it. If the bioplastic is home compostable, there should be a kind of identification logo. For example, if we are talking about the plastics that is home compostable, uh, we day to day use uh, carry bags we are using, that should be those kind of compounds. So uh, this we have to keep into mind. Uh, I also wanted to show you, since I'm not able to share at the moment, but I also wanted to show you uh, the different compounds that we, uh, different uh, other uh, cycles, the end life cycle of bioplastics. And also when we actually launched in the Northeast, something called SE organic bag, that is a product uh, made up of uh, um, biodegradable polymers, compostable polymers certified by CPCB government of India in 2019. And uh, that has given a, a lot, that took a lot of momentum and uh, has provided, I would say, uh, um, a good, uh, a meaningful, has come out as a meaningful alternative to the entire problem of single use plastics. People have also, uh, they have taken those single use plastics and they have used at home. They have tried to compost it at home under home composting, whose results were posted on YouTube and otherwise. So like this way, what I mean to inform you all that if we choose the right polymer for the right uh, you know, uh, product, then of course, biodegradable uh, or bioplastics will be a very, very effective alternative to single use plastics. So uh, with this, I think I have already come to the end of my presentation today. And uh, thank you so much for your patient listening. We wanted to, uh, we are 10 minutes ahead of it. Sarmila, over to you, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, and Vivek. And my apologies for all the technical glitches. And yes, in the meantime, uh, our DG was supposed to be with us for, and with your permission from all of you, I would like to read it out before you all. Am I audible, Vivek Bhaya? Your voice is still breaking, but uh, you are audible. Uh, please go ahead. Uh, Ma'am, if, if we have any questions, uh, if we can wait for uh, uh, five minutes. I think, uh, Sarmila, you better take the questions first. Okay, ma'am. Friends, if you have any questions uh, to uh, the three presentations, email IDs has also been said, but if you want to ask, this is the time for you. Please go ahead. Now we have an interactive session or with all the speakers and I request all the participants. Thank you. And I would like to shoot that question to all the resource person who are there today. I think, Sarmila, we can go ahead. That's fine. Uh, your voice is also breaking. So once so, again, uh, we have already, uh, we were supposed to conclude the webinar by 4 o'clock, but uh, we are way ahead of time. Uh, if you have, uh, we have posted our, okay, uh, this is problematic plastic seen as hygiene, so customers are tricked into buying it. Uh, Okay, okay. Is there any direct question, Mr. Uh, Fazil?
Okay, okay, I can't see one. So uh, once again, thank you so much for connecting with us. Uh, sincere apologies for all the technical glitches that happened today. We have shared our email ID. If you have any question, you can get in touch and communicate with uh, the speakers uh, today and uh, uh, directly ask your query. And thank you so much once again for joining us on the eve of uh, Earth Day, uh, the Earth Dialogues. And uh, we are looking forward to seeing you all on 30th April, where when we will have our another session on uh, traditional practices to sustainable development. Once again, I thank each and every one of you. I'm okay. grateful to all the speakers. Yeah, Rosanji, you have something? Yeah. Yes, Please. I just wanted to quickly, like, you know, get back to you saying, like, you know, we have a system where we can't even collect general waste. So how can, like, you know, customers or consumers actually negotiate this entire gamut of oxobiodegradable, biodegradable, compostable? We don't have systems to kind of, uh, you know, manage uh, regular biodegradable waste. So, so I think we have to be extremely careful to kind of push these products because these products on a broken system makes no sense. Globally, there is more and more literature showing the alternatives cannot be single use, however bio. And then there is another question in a country like India where people are starving. Imagine switching food-based products to, to making uh, things to carry food, you know? So it just doesn't make sense. So I just wanted to share that. However much of, of stamping from uh, different uh, global standards and national standards. I think it just doesn't make sense. I just wanted to share. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rosen, for pointing it out. Uh, just, uh, I would like to share uh, on uh, the concern that has been raised. Mr. Rosen, you're very much right that we have a very poor system of collection, but that is where uh, the responsibility of even the manufacturers come into play. Uh, I would uh, like to share, having said this, I would like to share that uh, in Meghalaya, when we started with SE Organic Bag, how we started, we also encouraged, government has encouraged each and everyone to do composting at home. See, when we want to solve about the problem of plastic, the best solution is if it can be solved at individual household level. If that is not, you know, disposed outside the house, that could be the best solution to it. That's what we thought about. And that is how we moved into it. And we have seen that success rate was really very high. It was really very much appreciated by householders and everyone. Yeah, there is a concern, but I'm quite sure that if we work collectively as a team, then we can really fight the plastic pollution challenge. Thank you. Any other question or concern? I would appreciate if anyone has any comments. We can give a few minutes. Okay, so once again, I would, on behalf of uh, the district committee and district, I would like to thank our speakers today, particularly Dr. Gayatri Raghava, Madam, and Mr. Roshan Rai, who has spared their time from their busy schedule and uh, were with us today uh, and delivered so wonderfully. We all learned from their presentation. Thank you so much for joining us on behalf of Rotary International District 3240 and ISRAG uh, RI. Thank you so much. I also like to thank the participants who have been here with us uh, very much. Uh, there were nearly 68 registrations, but uh, I could see very less participants. Anyway, this uh, entire presentations are recorded that will go also into the uh, uh, library of ISRAG on our uh, YouTube channel. You can always watch the entire show and also contact the speakers uh, if you have any query. Thank you so much once again. and. Uh, I think that will be all for today. We can stop the recording. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you on 30th.